Welcome back to the channel, or just welcome if you're new here. In this video, I'm going to share what I think are the best business opportunities to start in 2023. And when putting together these business ideas, I had some very specific criteria. Number one is I think all of these have the potential for long-term growth into quite a large significant business. Meaning these aren't just some hustles that you can make a little bit of income on the side from. I think if you start these businesses and work on them for an extended period of time, that you could really have something quite big. And secondly, each of these businesses is capitalizing on an industry or a trend that has a significant tailwind at the moment. I mean, it's expected to grow rapidly or is already growing rapidly and will continue to grow for quite a long time. And the reason for that is because it's much easier to grow a new business in an industry or in an area that is rapidly expanding and growing and has a lot of attention compared to one that is maybe stagnant or even shrinking. For example, crypto. I wouldn't want to be starting a business in the crypto space now because you're going to be facing significant headwinds and it's going to be quite difficult. And so the first business I think you could start is in the space of AI, specifically an AI consultant or educator, meaning somebody who can go into a business and educate them around what the opportunities are with tools like ChatGPT and graphic tools like Midjourney to open their eyes as to what's possible for their business and how they can use them to improve efficiency and improve their workflows. And then also providing education around how to use them. While I think these tools are great, what we're seeing is a lot of people are jumping in, they're trying to use these tools and it comes back to the old saying of garbage in garbage out meaning people are trying to use these tools and they don't understand how to use them properly they don't understand how to give good prompts in order to get good output so they use them they don't get a good output they write them off as being maybe not suitable for their business or for what they do and then they move on and the reason is simply because there is a gap in education people don't understand how to use these tools effectively. And I think the people who are experts in this field or who become experts in this field, meaning understanding not only how to use these tools, but also what the different use cases are and teaching businesses how to leverage them are going to do really well. And you could either do this as a one-on-one -on -one consultant, meaning you work one-on-one -on -one with companies to help them leverage the power of these new AI tools for their business, or you could do it in an educational role, meaning you create free content around this, become a creator in the space, and then possibly creating educational products around that, things like online courses and memberships to further provide education in this space. I think there's huge potential for growth here and everybody is kind of starting the learning curve at the same point at the moment. So if you can learn these things really quickly, become an absolute expert in them and start to provide valuable content around that, I think there's a huge opportunity there. And that leads me into the next opportunity, which is similar to this, and that is building software tools that use these AI APIs. So things like ChatGPT, which is built on top of OpenAI, they all have APIs, meaning people can build software that plugs in and uses these tools in order to create the outputs that that software provides. If you think of tools like Jasper, that actually uses OpenAI. So it sits over the top of OpenAI, and when it gives you output, it's actually coming from the OpenAI tool. And the value that they add is they give you a very nice clean UI and they also add some custom prompts and things I'm sure in the background to get you better outputs, more specifically designed for what you want. But you can do similar things and it doesn't have to be overly complex. For example, I might build a Facebook ad headline generator where people simply have to enter a few things like their niche, what their product is, what their customer struggles with and how their product solves it and then it might come up with 10 headlines ideas for them. That's just one loose example but it's very possible to build simple software tools on top of these AI APIs that serve small niche communities that can actually do really well. Next up, we've got a YouTube thumbnail designer. Now this one, obviously you need skill for. So if you have design skill, then I think this is a huge opportunity to focus on. And not just taking concepts from a client and creating nice looking graphics. I think the opportunity is when you go beyond that. There is a huge demand for YouTube thumbnail designers who are able to come up with concept and design, meaning talking to the client, understanding what the video is about, and then coming up with a concept and a design for that video. 
If you can do that, creators will pay you a lot of money for that skill. But as I said, you need that skill. And even if you are a great designer at the moment, the piece that you need to educate yourself on in order to close that gap to fill a role like this is learning what A makes up a really good thumbnail for YouTube. So it's not just like creating a pretty graphic. You need to understand what makes YouTube work, what makes a good YouTube thumbnail. And part of that, or the main part of that is understanding the conceptual side. So how do you come up with something that YouTube viewers will actually click? But if you can do that, massive opportunity and only growing. And sticking to the topic of YouTube, the next one I've got on the list is a video editor. So again, I'm not going to tell you that this is something that you can do tomorrow with no skills or no money. This is something that does require skill. And similar to the YouTube thumbnails, I think if you're a great editor, I think the key here is focusing on not just continuing or getting better at your editing skills, but learning how to specifically edit YouTube videos. Every platform has different editing styles and editing a great YouTube video is very different to editing, let's say, a short TikTok video. So if you can learn the key editing skills required to edit a great YouTube video and you focus on that as your niche and start working with creators in the YouTube space, I think that's a massive opportunity. You could also do the same for, let's say, short form videos like TikTok or YouTube Shorts or really any different platform you can think of. But I think the key here is taking your video editing skills and again, applying that strategic skill on top and really getting a good understanding of editing for one specific platform and focusing on that. I think YouTube is a great opportunity. That's where I would be doing it. If I was a highly skilled video editor, we have video editors on our team who are amazing. I don't do that. It's not something I do because I'm not skilled at it, but if you are, massive opportunity. Now, next up, I'm actually going to recommend an agency, but probably not the type of agency you would expect me to say. So I'm not going to say a Facebook ad agency or a social media marketing agency. The model that I would be focusing on if I was starting an agency in 2023 would be a content repurposing agency. So what these agencies do is they take existing content from a business or from a brand and repurpose that content for other platforms. So for example, I put out a YouTube video every week. A content repurposing agency would then take that video for me without me doing anything else and they could turn it into a bunch of YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, TikTok videos, they could turn it into a series of tweets and LinkedIn posts, even an Instagram carousel, a Facebook post and publish it across all of those different channels just from that original YouTube video. There is huge value in this for companies and for creators because with no extra effort or no extra input, they are now reaching many, many more people across multiple platforms. And so this helps them get more distribution, which helps them grow their audience quicker, which helps generate more revenue for their brand. And that's the value proposition or the selling point of an agency like this is we'll take what you're already creating and we'll maximize the value of that for you. Now, you may have already realized, obviously this in itself takes skill and this may not be something that you're able to do by yourself at first. You may need to bring somebody in with different skill sets in order to do this. So this could be a bit of a bigger play for somebody who has a business partner or maybe some extra resources available because you are going to need people to edit those videos, to create those posts and to have that specific knowledge of each platform. As I said, when I was talking about becoming a YouTube editor previously, you are going to want to be very good at creating content for each of the platforms that you're creating it for. Simply cutting up 60 second clips, slapping them on every platform. Yes, while that is going to technically do the job, it's not going to do it well. Those things are not going to do well on those different platforms for your client, unless you understand how to actually create good content for each of them. For example, writing a really good tweet or tweet thread is a skill and it's a very different skill to editing a 60 second clip from a YouTube video to post onto TikTok. Just be aware that if this is the business path you decide to go down in 2023, it requires multiple skill sets and you probably don't have all of them. So you'll either need business partners or you'll need to hire people who can do that. If you wanna create a business that's really, really good at what you do and that's what I recommend doing. So the next one is becoming a creator. Now the creator economy is still growing incredibly quickly and you can earn a very good living as a creator even if you're starting in 2023. If you have specialized knowledge or expertise around a specific topic, then creating valuable content around that topic is a great way to build a successful business. 
And whether you choose to do that through YouTube or blogging or another channel, you can actually monetize your content in many, many different ways. Advertising is just the tip of the iceberg. You can also monetize through digital products. You can monetize through physical products like e-commerce. And there are many other ways that you can do that too. But by becoming a creator first and building an audience, then that opens the doors and that will help guide you as to what you should actually create and how you should monetize that business. The key to becoming a successful creator is going to be quality. You're competing against many other people creating content in the same niche. So the focus needs to be on creating the best possible content for your audience. And whoever does the best job of that is going to win. Now, this next one is a good one coming off the back of talking about creators, and that is creating a newsletter. So you've probably heard of companies like Morning Brew or The Hustle who've built these huge newsletters and sold them for massive amounts of money. And there are new newsletter companies popping up all the time and you don't necessarily have to turn it into a $10 million a year business to do well with a newsletter. The key for this one, I think, will be finding, again, the next big industry or next big trend to jump on. So a recent one we saw over the last 12 months is The Milk Road. It's a newsletter in the crypto space, which grew incredibly quickly because one, they were in the crypto space, which was generating a huge amount of interest at the time. And two, their writing was incredibly good. So they came up with a newsletter that was much more entertaining and fun to read than anything else in that space and they were riding the crypto wave. So if you wanna create a big newsletter business, I would be looking for what's that next wave? What's the next big industry or trend that you can jump on? The first one that jumps to mind for me is AI, artificial intelligence. I think in 2023, we're going to see continued growing interest in that industry, as I mentioned before. And so if you can create the best newsletter in that space, massive opportunity there for a really good business. And in terms of monetization, the most common for a newsletter business is advertising, meaning finding companies who are willing to pay money to sponsor or to run advertisements in your newsletter. And those companies are willing to pay based on how many people actually see that ad, meaning the size of your newsletter is important, but also the open rates and the click-through rates on those newsletter as well makes a huge difference in terms of how much you can earn from advertising revenue. And on top of that, you can actually go beyond advertising. Newsletters like The Hustle created Trends, which is a membership off the back of that newsletter, which generates recurring revenue. So once you have a big newsletter, you can monetize it in many different ways as well. So these are my favorites. Let me know in the comments which one of these you like best and if you've got any other ideas for 2023 and what you think the big trends are going to be. Hope you enjoyed this little bit of a different video and I will see you in the new year. Bye.